Hey there, folks. Uh, today we're going to talk about my uh, cost of living in Lisbon, Portugal. I have been trying, to, <laughs> I've been trying to get you this video for a while because um, I know some of you kind of wanted to have something to compare it to, and I've just been struggling. Like I would keep all the receipts together, and then my selective OCD would kick in, and then I'd throw away said receipts. But <laughs> Um, I do have some breakdowns that hopefully will make things a little bit helpful for you um, in your decision to move to Portugal in addition to Europe. So before we um, jump into the actual numbers, I want you to uh, focus on the actual currency exchange. And this is important because the majority of my audience is U.S. Um, so if you're getting paid in, the, in, in USD and you're converting things to euro, there's a drastic difference. And I need people to kind of be aware of that because if you um, don't consider that, hey, honey, um, if you don't consider that in your um, finances, it'll hit you and you won't be ready. So one of the things um, that I think I didn't process in regards to the USD EU conversion um, was initially when I first moved to Portugal, I did a lot of Airbnbs and um, hotels and things like that. So everything is in USD. You get billed in USD um, because if you started your account, your Airbnb account in the US, that is the currency that will charge you in. So it wasn't really until I was paying rent and I had to transfer USD money to euros where I was like, oh, um, so you mean I'm going to lose 20 percent every time uh, I make a transfer? So um, let's just look at the chart really quickly. Um, so this is you can go to any website and and uh, see what the euros USD is going to be. So many times when I talk to you all about money or what something costs here, I always keep it in euros because that's what it is. If depending on when someone looks at this video, how much it costs in USD is going to fluctuate. So again, if your money is coming from the US, but you are paying Euro bills, the Euro is worth more than USD. So let's make the highest it went was like 23. So $1 and 23 equal one Euro. And I remember when that was the case, cause I was like, oh, are we at 23% right now? So that is critical when you have to pay bills in another currency, not just Europe, but consider that, okay? So when I first moved to Portugal, um, I think it was like $1.11. One USD to euro was $1.11. And it's it's pretty much at one twenty now. Okay. So, all right. Um, I need you to know that. And let me just show you um, within a month how it can change in regards to currency. And if this, this is something you're not prepared for or you're not considering, this can be like, what the hell? So as you can see, it fluctuates. This is just you know, one month. So it can go, it was low as 119 and then went all the way up to 121. Now, what do you, why am I telling you this? Because in the event that you have to transfer money, you need to pay attention to this. <laughs> so there may be certain times of the month or certain times of the year where it's going to be more cost effective for you to transfer your money, particularly if you have bills in a different currency. If you are living abroad and you're not considering the currency exchange, you're going to end up getting hit with um, some stuff that you weren't quite ready for. Okay. So you don't have to use this website. I just want you to be clear um, that that's what you're going to have to look at occasionally when you are um, transferring one currency to another. You may have a bank that's a little bit better with it. So the 23% is just the exchange rate. That does not include the funds that it'll cost to get the money to said bank. So you need to check with your current bank to see if international wires, are, well, usually international wires are, um, are a fee, but you gotta see if you're in the appropriate bank account for that to make sense, okay? I'll do another video um, on that, uh, but I, I need you all to understand that this is gonna be currency in euros and there you have it. So when you look into these numbers, that I'm getting ready to share with you, they're going to be in euros. So it's it's kind of like you got to balance your situation out to say, okay, if I'm going to lose 23 to whatever percent, um, the cost of living hopefully should be lower. It depends on you. I'm just telling you how I did it. You could do it whatever you want. Okay. So um, I live in the Providence of Lisbon. Um, I live in a neighborhood called Cachias. And these are the expenses I pay based on where I am living. Rent can fluctuate 
all across Lisbon. So I need you to be clear on that. So the closer I found, the closer I am to city center, the more expensive things were. So Lisbon city center is like the New York of Portugal. So naturally things are gonna be more expensive and they were dramatically. I probably saved 50% not living in city center versus moving about 20, 20 22 minutes outside of Lisbon city center. I, uh, if I take a uh, Uber, which there is a train station <laughs> that's like a 10 minute walk, but lately I haven't been organized because I'm neurotic about time and I need to be everywhere on time. Um, I haven't planned well enough to take the train and be where I got to be. So I'm always taking an Uber or a Bolt. For Uber or Bolt, it costs me about approximately eight euros to get from where I live to um, Lisbon city center. So that's the um, downtown area, Saldana, Estefania, um, all that. Okay. All right. So now I put up some stuff. So last month, um, that's not what I meant to say. A couple months ago, uh, I guess when it was warm, my utilities were about 60 euros, but now that it's the winter, it has increased a little bit. And I made this little um, slide so I can show you exactly what I'm paying. Let me get rid of that one. Add to stream. That's not what I wanted. Um, I made a little slide so that I can show you what my breakdown was for the last three months. But understand these were the winter months and we had a killer of winter um, this year. So that was um, unexpected. So let me pull up. Sorry, y'all. It's taking me a minute because I am slow this morning. Okay, there we go. Oops. Okay. So for November, and we're going to break this down. I hope you guys can see my mouse. So my water was 33 euros. My gas was 31. My electricity was 27. And my internet, which is always constant, was 23 euros. In December, this was the cold, cold month. I mean, it was it was severely cold. <laughs> it was so cold. So the water was 16. My gas was 17. My electricity um, was 77 and I ran my heater the all day, all night. So it was higher than most months, but I wasn't really upset about that. And again, my internet was 23 euros for January. My water bill was 1603. My gas was 603. My electricity was 5253. And my internet, uh, was, uh, 23 as it tends to be. So um, that's what my monthly expenses were for um, the last three months. But again, I so usually my utilities run about in the winter, about 100 to like 112. But in Washington, D.C., my my water bill was one hundred dollars. So to be able to cover all of my um utilities for 100 euros is a dramatic difference than what I'm used to paying um, in Washington, D.C., of course. Now, if you want to know more about my apartment, I have included a link in the description that will show you the apartment. I pay 750 euros per month for this furnished apartment, um, one bedroom, and for my uh, groceries. <laughs> this is the one where I kept throwing the receipts away. Uh, so I, um, I think I've done a couple grocery hauls and maybe some of you have seen that if you haven't, of course, I've put the link in the description so you can see exactly what the prices were for certain items. Um, I do two forms of grocery shopping. I do staples, uh, probably mm, every two weeks. And that's including like rice, pasta, beans, stuff that's not going to go bad because, um, the food is so fresh here, which I'm really happy about. I have to go to a grocery store almost every other day, pretty much, or every two days because I like to buy uh, fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and they go bad really, really fast here. So you got to kind of re-up. Now I have a bodega. That's not called a bodega. It's a um, market right down the street. So if I need something quick, I can get that or I'll go to the hypermarket, which is about maybe a mile from my house. My grocery bill tends to be anywhere from 20 euros a week to 40 euros a week. Now, if I'm cooking, I got my folks coming over. It's more than that because I like to cook and I want to make sure everybody got enough food. So that's the difference there. Let me see. Do I need to give you guys any disclaimers now? So if you want to know about apartments, again, the video I put in the description, those it has some links there that should be helpful in regards to you looking for apartment. Um, 
I happen to, uh, this happens to be an Airbnb that I signed a one year lease for. So when you're looking for apartments, they typically will give you a, um, a uh, efficiency rating in regards to how the utilities are and that type of thing. So I don't know what it is for this particular apartment because it was an Airbnb and I wasn't privy to that information. But when you're looking for apartments, um, you'll have that. And so when it also when it, when you're thinking about moving, if you're converting from Airbnb to a long term stay, you are going to have to pay first, last months and security deposit bare minimum. So that's going to be three months of rent. And again, remember, we were talking about euros. <laughs> So if you know that you are planning to move um, and you're going to have to come up with that uh, substantial um, down payment for wherever you're going to move in various. I haven't had to establish my own utilities and maybe someone in the comments later can tell us if you are getting gas and electric for the first time in your name, if you have to pay a deposit. I don't know if you have to do that or not, because they're still in my landlord's name. He just bills me for those things. So I say all that to say, if this is a move that you're trying to make, whether it be Europe or any country in which the currency is going to fluctuate, you might want to pull out that money at the best opportune time um, when you have to pay that, because you, you're talking about adding an extra 30 percent onto whatever it is you're paying because you're converting from USD to euro. So you really need to be clear about that. Um, Let's see. Oh, so I pay for the apartment. I pay 750 euros. Um, my groceries range anywhere from 20 to 40 euros a, a week to every two weeks. My health insurance is eight euros a month. Now I got my health insurance um, before or during the pandemic. Um, so I never changed it or worried too much about my health insurance as to what it covers and what it doesn't cover because I wasn't really leaving the house. Um, once the world opens back up, um, there's some various different tiers of health insurance I will look into um, to see if I need to pay more or less. But if you are getting the second part of your visa, you do need to have health insurance. And so that was required for me to get my residency card. Um, transportation, as I told you before, Uber runs about Uber or Volt. Mm, Uber Volt cost me about eight euros for me to get to uh, downtown. So. I don't really go there that much. Um, so let's just say my transportation costs are 100 euros. That's probably sounds too much, but I don't think that's what it is. Um, my heat is electric. It is not gas. If you are getting an apartment um, in Lisbon, I was told if your heat is um, in gas, you would save significantly because gas is a cheaper utility than electric. So it is important to know, again, my electricity bill uh, did increase during the um, winter because uh, it was cold and I had a heater on the whole time. So I think, um, oh, my cell phone bill. My cell phone bill is 14 euros a month. I have Mio. Um, I have like two gigs of uh, data. It's not much. I'm using the house or I'm at somebody's house. So I'm connecting to somebody's Wi-Fi. So I ain't really trip about it. If you first come to Portugal, um, there's Vodafone, which is I also have this um, hotspot. And I use this. Well, I did when we could <laughs> work in the park. If I wanted to work in the park and I needed Wi-Fi, I would get this. This one has 60 gigs and it's about 40 euros a month with no contract. Um, there are cheaper plans. I just got this one because they were saying that if I did a Zoom, it would be strong enough to do Zooms. If you're just coming to Portugal and you don't want a contract, um, Vodafone is a good thing. I think 20 euros a month you can get um, a phone for a good amount of um, data and some, I don't know. I needed to get contract because I had to open a bank account and in order to open a bank account, I needed a bill. Okay, I think I did everything. I think I covered everything. Now let's go to your questions. All right, let's see. Alberto, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Hey, Renee. Hey, Malika. What's going on? What's going on? Anybody have any questions? Hey, folks. Hello from you. Hey, Winter. Tell your daughter I said hey. Thank you, um, T. Kelly. I'm glad this is helpful. Hey, James. Moved to Valencia, Spain two weeks ago. Congratulations. I'm always doing currency conversion in my head, girl. Um, also, don't forget the currency exchange fees. Exactly. So there are two 
components of the fee that you would have to consider. You have to consider the actual percentage of the currency in addition to the exchange rates that your bank will charge you. Um, so you need to find out before you leave the States, are you in a bank that is um, favorable of transferring money um, to another country and how much that will cost you? Yeah, those euro exchange rates will have you feeling, uh, who are you telling? Yes, they will. Hey, Sandra, how are you, love? Okay, they will. Only thing is my overall cost is significantly cheaper. Yes, my cost is significantly cheaper as well. But I do want people to understand that you do need to be here for a minute for that to make sense. So if you're going to get a long-term apartment, you're going to put down a minimum of four months worth of um, rent. And if you're not going to stay here for a long period of time and you're getting your money from the USD, it ended up kind of being comparable. Um, you know what I mean? Like I've been here long enough that, you know, I'm, it's, it's balancing out. But consider that at the very beginning, you're going to come up spending a good amount of money. Uh, I can't tell you what that amount is because obviously it matters on what your rent is and other things that are important to you. But you just really need to consider that. Um, so, yeah. Hey, Michael. All right. Hello, everyone. The quality you get in Europe is in the so let me see. Okay, the quality you get in Europe isn't the same. You may put, pay more in Europe for less quality in different parts of the U.S. The quality would be better. Um, I mean, that's your opinion. I, the quality, that's it's, it depends on what we're talking about. Um, I think it's a bit general to uh, assume that about all of Europe and all of the U.S. So it just really depends. Um would love to get out of the UK. It would be great to go back to Valencia. I hear Valencia is beautiful. Tune in now. Should we play? No worries. No worries. Okay. I don't feel like there are any questions. Yes. DMV utilities are very expensive. The total for utilities are what my, like, right. So my utilities are what my water bill used to be in DC for um, three bedrooms. Electricity, yes. It's okay, so we lived in France briefly. It was actually much cheaper than my home. Girl, with New York, I'm sure it was cheaper than New York. Hey, Seattle, Seattle in the house. Okay, so if we don't have any questions, then I'll jump off. Do you need a car to get around? I don't have a car. Um, if you need a car to get around, that's going to be a personal preference. I tend to either use the train or use Uber. So getting a car to get around depends on where you live. If you are living in Lisbon in the center center of Lisbon, you shouldn't need a car and it'll probably be highly annoying to try to find parking. Um, so getting a car, it's really a personal uh, decision. I don't. So I'm making it. Ah, uh, yes. Are the fruits and vegetables in Portugal much tastier and fresher? Of course. Why wouldn't they be? It's Yes, tastier and fresher in most other countries in America. <laughs> Did you know... Uh, I haven't done that much. Um, I did meet some Cape, folks from Cape Verde. Guys, it's a pandemic. So meeting new people is a bit of a challenge uh, because we are on lockdown. OK. Um, how did your family uh, hair question? Did you raise your question. Let me see. OK. Question. Is it rare to rent Airbnb long term? I don't know about rare, but that's where I live. I live in a house that was uh, rented for Airbnb and I asked for a long term apartment. I don't know how easy that would be if there wasn't a pandemic. Um, some people may have considered uh, that they would rent it long term because they couldn't. There weren't as many tours. So is if it's rare, I'm not all the way sure, but I lucked up. So I was happy about that. Okay, let's see. We got hair question. Who braids your hair in Portugal? So this is the first time I got somebody else to braid it. Most of you know I usually wear locks and I do my locks myself. It was a special experience. So I will definitely not shout out the people who did it. Um, because if you have a bad experience, then you're going to end up in my DMs. And that's not where I need you all to be. But yeah, I got them braided here. Um, but typically, if you see me with locks, I did it. Okay, how cold does it get? I don't know, girl. Um, in general, uh, I don't know. It was it was super cold. It it was like I'm about. I guess I've become one of those people that feels like 
fifties is super cold. It was like, but I'm off the water. So it was a breeze. It was cold. It was cold. I don't know how, how cold it gets typically. Cause I've only been here for two years. Last year, it was not this cold. I, I remember it being 70 degrees in January. So I don't know what is going on in Europe. They said it snowed in Spain. So stuff is going on. Okay. Health insurance, health costs. Like I said, my health insurance is eight euros. Um, did you pick the neighborhood? Let's see. Um, hello. Why did you pick the neighborhood you lived in? Would you recommend? It's hard for me to recommend um, neighborhoods because I don't know that many. <laughs> you know what I mean? I haven't been here that long. Um, and I lived in Estefania in, in city center, um, Saldana, um, Alfama. I lived in a bunch of cities closer to um, to the downtown. That That's really all I knew. Um, at the time I needed to, I just got my resident visa and I needed to hurry up and get a lease in order to fulfill my obligation for the second part of my visa. So I needed to hurry up and get an apartment and, um, every Airbnb I stayed in, which was this one, I asked what they consider doing a long-term lease. So I could at least check that off of my to-do list. So, um, the neighborhood I live in is in Cassius. I picked that neighborhood really out of default. Fall. It wasn't like I knew about Kashias and I was like, let me go look at places in Kashias. That's not what it was. It was me looking for Airbnbs initially when I came back. And then I was looking for someone to agree to allow me to stay there for a year so I can fulfill my obligation for my visa. So I don't know um, what I recommend it. It really depends on what you're into. Um, if you need to be in the center, the center of the city, you want to walk to your grocery store, you want to walk to everything. This is not as much of a, as a walking area, um, but it's still doable. It's super beautiful. It's right off the coast. Um, I like it, but I, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't know what you like. If you tell me what you like, I can tell you if it has it. Um, fruits and vegetables taste good over here. Yes, fish is amazing. Okay, how are you doing? Oh, sorry guys, I'm going up the questions. I think I missed. Okay, fruits and vegetables. I know you don't. Have okay, so let's see. Um, I know you don't have kids, but do you know if it's hard to get a visa for children? I have no idea, honey. I'm so sorry. Um, I don't think I even know anybody here who has kids and got a visa. Yeah, I'm sorry, love. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of us single folks over here. Um let's see. I haven't heard that we can no longer use Airbnb as proof of residence for long-term stay. Is that true? I don't know. Um guys, I've already done my visa. So whatever is changing, I would not know that. Okay? So you need to concentrate on going to the agency that's focusing on your visa and ask them because it's been a pandemic. So many things have changed. So um, I applied for mine last July and so much has changed just in that short period of time. So in my opinion, don't take anybody's word for it. Just send the emails or call the um, office and find out if it's true. Because the last thing you want to do is get dated information from people and it's not going to work out well for you. So go into, I went into that office eight times and I sat down and I had that woman tell me what I needed to do. So if you want to move to another country, I would suggest just go ahead and talk to the office that can give you those answers. I don't know. Um, that was not the case um, when I did it. Um, when I gave them my address, because my Airbnb has an address, they didn't ask is this an Airbnb? They just wanted to know the address for my uh, year staying there. And that's what I gave them. So I hope that's helpful, guys. But anything that's going on is changing. I have no idea. How's the weather today? It is beautiful. It is um, about 60. It's low. It's, it's mid 60s. It's still kind of fun. OK. Is your town Kashkais? My town is not Kashkais. My town is Kashias. There's a difference. Those are two different locations. Kashkais is further down. Um, I'm in Kashias. Hey there, honey. I appreciate you. Okay. If you live in Europe long enough, you eventually start. Okay. Okay. Hey there. If you live in Europe long enough, you eventually stop converting. I think in euros and I use the metric system, never thought it would happen. <laughs> so there may stop converting, but if your money, if you are being employed from a U.S. company and you have to pay your expenses in Europe, most likely you are not going to stop converting. <laughs> I mean, unless you know about heart. So 
it's kind of know about heart when it changes so much. And also for those of you who have a employer in the U.S. and you know the U.S. is going to tax you. OK, you're going to get taxed on uh, U.S. anywhere from 28 to 35 percent, depending on your tax bracket. So you get taxed on the U.S. and then when you convert it to euros, you will lose a minimum of whatever the exchange rate is at the current time. So you really need to consider this, folks, um, when you are moving abroad or when you're moving to a country in which the currency is worth more than the home country or the country in which you are um uh, the country in which you live. How is my Portuguese? It is getting better. Thank you. I'm um, excited. You are. I'm excited and so nervous at the same time. Hey, Winter, that is normal. It is expected. So the trans of us are confusing and not orderly. Um, Hi, my friend in Lisbon who grew up there said the trains, buses are very confusing, not orderly. Have you found this to be true? Um, I have not taken a bus since I've been here, but I've taken the train. I found the train not confusing at all, but it's, it's color coordinated like it is in DC. So um, that may be <laughs> why I was so used to it because we deal in colors um, in DC as far as our train. So I haven't experienced that. Okay, let's see. Um, sorry, folks. Uh, it depends on the temperature and the negatives. Okay, my friend. Okay. Past winter in Barcelona was especially cold. Yes, like what has been going on? It's been freezing. I remember wearing a whole full fledged outfit to go to sleep. Like it was, it was the most. Um, in certain enough to reach the negative too. Okay, but it depends on where you are in Portugal. Good to know. Are there pictures on your wall? Some look. Um, none of these pictures of me. Uh, this is my landlord's house. So all of these pictures are from him. I am not in any of them. Um, we did not. We don't know each other. Uh, bring comfortable clothes and a coat. You should be fine. I agree. Um, uh, okay. So, hey, grew up in Southeast DC. Represent. That's where I was born. Um, do you know anything about Cape Verde? I'm planning on visiting in the summer. Um, also, any update on dental costs? I don't know much about Cape Verde. Um, dental costs. Okay, good question. So, I did go to um, back to the dentist to get fitted for braces. Um, and I have to do some special type of uh, x-ray that they didn't have there. And so that visit cost me another 60 euros. Um, but I haven't gotten the price of what braces will cost uh, yet. So I will keep you posted on that as soon as I find that information up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Absolutely, honey. Um, oh, yeah. So um, good thing. Our rich journey has children. That's right. I haven't met them yet, but uh, they do have children. So you can direct your questions to them in regards to visas. Thank you so much for that, Michael. Uh, is your city diverse with? Um, it says, uh, is your city diverse? Is your city diverse? Are there a lot of black folks there? I don't know. I haven't. Uh, if you're saying when I go to the grocery store, do I see people? A lot of black people? Hmm, not so much. I mean, it's Europe. Europe is a, <laughs> we ain't going to be the majority in Europe, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but the city, I can't tell if the city is diverse yet. It's kind of hard for me to answer these questions because we've been in a lockdown. So I haven't done, I can't even tell you like the best parts of Kashias yet because I haven't really paid attention to it because we've been in this lockdown. So we are locked down in Portugal. Word on the street is that uh, it should be lifted in mid-March. So, yeah. Um, can you speak on, uh, shoot, perhaps it's best to ask Cape Verdean YouTuber. Okay, good. This is good. Okay, apparently there's a Cape Verdean YouTuber named um, Perry. So, yes, ask her because I know nothing. Um, hey, Anna, how are you? Um, can you speak on diversity um, if, are you talking about in Portugal in general or in my neighborhood? Portugal in general, I can't speak that much about diversity yet, only because I've been here during a pandemic. Um, so I think if, if you haven't traveled much outside of the U.S., um, like a lot of places are going to have a, a, a variety of different people from different countries. There's going to be different people from Africa, all parts of Europe, like it's just it's just substantially more diverse in general, um, just because it's normal for people 
to move and live somewhere else. Not that it's not normal in the States, but it's not that many Americans that decide to leave, not as many in comparison to other cultures that decide to leave their home country and go live in another country. So in regards to diversity, I find it a, a bit more diverse um, when I leave the country than um, when I stay in the US. And that's just my personal experience. In regards to Portugal specifically, I can't really speak on it too much only because we're in a different time. We're in a different, like it's a pandemic and we've been in lockdown um, for a minute. Even prior to the severe lockdown, it's not like you could go socialize much. Like, so it wasn't any social clubs or things open for you to kind of like go out there and meet new friends. So I, I haven't even had the opportunity to see more of Portugal because over last summer I wanted to, you know, see and see what other maybe city or country, uh, part of the country I wanted to live in. Couldn't do that because we were limited as to how we can move. So, but I'll keep you posted on that. Um, let's see, through taxation changes, once you've been out of the States for longer than 330 days within a year. That depends on a lot of factors. And um, I would recommend anybody who has any uh, questions on taxes to consult a tax attorney. So for me in particular, I own a company. So I'm taxed differently. If you are a W-2 employee and you are taxed from a U.S. corporation, you're going to be taxed differently. If you're a 1099 versus C Corp LLC, you're going to be taxed differently. So just contact a tax professional um, if you have any questions about taxes and how that's going to work for your international in your home country. I would advise you get an accountant in your home country in addition to the country in which you're moving. Um, Lisbon is the most diverse city. Okay, Miguel's got some information. He says Lisbon is the most diverse city metropolitan area in Portugal. Okay, how many times can you leave the country? Let's see. How many times can you leave the country and for how long once you apply for your residency visa? Um, so there's two parts to the residency visa. There is the part where you apply in your home country. When you uh, get to Portugal, you have... I think you can leave twice, I think. But there's going to be a date in which you have to hurry up and apply for the second part of your residency once you get into Portugal. Once you get into Portugal and you get your actual residency card, I don't have mine here. Once you get your residency card, you can leave as many times as you want. But in between that, you are still, you, you're not really official, official yet because the residency visa that they give you from your home country expires. Mine expired in four months after I received it. So I don't know how the dates will change. So understand when you get your, your residency in your home country, you're not done yet. You know what I mean? So there's still a bit of requirement you've got to do. And then they say, okay, you're a resident. So once you're a resident, there's really not much of a limitation as to how many times you can leave. Um, but when you are not, when you're like halfway, like a, like a, like a baby resident, <laughs> then there are some limitations there. So I think it, um, says twice, but it'll say it on your, it'll say it on your visa. On mine, I think it said twice. Um, okay. Let's see. Random, but your visa. Okay. Okay. Emma. Okay. Sorry. It's going fast. Came again. Okay. 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 Contemplating. Okay. Let's see. All right, contemplating long-term visit instead in moving there. Are there opportunities in academia on the university level? Interested in teaching? Have I have no idea, hon. I don't go to college uh, here, um, so I have no information on that. I'm so sorry. Um, Golans, Cape Verdeans, Portuguese, and Golans, that is true. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, then try to find CV people on Facebook. Okay, so um, Cape Verde, they were asking about Cape Verde. Yeah, probably the best bet for most connections is going to be Facebook around this time because most of the social scenes here in Portugal that uh, help expats meet each other have not been meeting because we're in the middle of a pandemic. So it is going to be harder to meet people um, probably in most countries right now. Okay, I heard there's a large Cape Caribbean community in Lisbon. Is that true? Possibly. I have not met nobody, y'all. Look, I haven't met nobody new um, since we've been in lockdown. So I don't know if there's a, I feel like if there was a large Caribbean population, I feel like they would have more Caribbean food. Maybe I just haven't found it because I really want some Caribbean food. Um, so I'm not sure, honey. But uh, let's see what we got. Braids are great. You also 
Um, thank you. Um, maintain during lockdown. I've been super productive, gaining a lot of weight though, but I've been super productive. Thank you, honey. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. I did get these braids done in Lisbon. How long did it take you to prepare for your move? <sighs> um, three months. One, I was real gangster about it. I was just like, I'm going with nothing. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. And I was all emotional and weird when I left. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. Do I speak Portuguese? A little. I'm giving my really to Let's see. Okay. Given your move is still relatively no, how would you rate the level of culture shock? I know this is to be clouded a bit due to, right. Uh... I didn't really experience that much culture shock. It's important to know that for those of you who meet me for the first time, I traveled extensively um, for three years prior to me moving to Lisbon. So that me, me moving, excuse me, me traveling that much um, gave me an experience of living outside of the country, even though I hadn't done it before. So I think if I hadn't traveled so much before, the cultural shock would have been severe. Um, for me, because I wouldn't know what to deal with. But I'm, I mean, I've been able to adjust. Uh, it's just my quality of life has become so much better. Like it's so much more relaxing. I can think, be creative, just relax. So it's, it's just, it's different. But far as my culture shock, I haven't, I haven't experienced it. But again, we've been in a lockdown, which you alluded to. So look, ask me again when, <laughs> when we can go outside and play. Okay, let's see. As a retiree, I heard they do not tax your pension. Is that true? I am not a retiree. I don't know what they do with your pension. So you would have to ask your tax professional as to how you get taxed. Um, I think a lot of that is going to depend on where your money comes from. And that may be certain limitations. When I try to talk to a tax professional here, they made it sound like for a certain amount of years and then something weird happened, but I'm not retired. So I don't, I don't have any information on that, honey. I'm sorry. Uh, do you pay, you do not pay deposits for utilities. Thank you, Nancy, for giving that information. Cause I had no clue. We appreciate you giving us that answer. Um, would you suggest visiting before moving it? Absolutely. I know there's some people that go go hard and they just like, I'm gonna move somewhere and I ain't seen it. I personally I wouldn't recommend that, but there's some people that go hard and they like, look, I feel like sometimes when you go certain places, it just it gives you a vibe. Like it either feels good or it doesn't. And I would hate for it to not feel good for someone, but they never visited before. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, definitely should visit. Um, if you think about moving out the country and changing so much of your life, I would recommend um, visiting before you make that move. But to each his own. OK, can you give some suggestions on health insurance and what may be the cost? I so I only have one health insurance. I didn't go through a whole bunch of different companies and my bank gave it to me. So they were like, you want some health insurance? And I knew I needed it for my visa. And I was like, all right, sign me up for that. Um, it was in the middle of a pandemic. So I did not, of course, get the most expensive health insurance, but there were like three options. One was eight euros. One was like mid cap at like maybe 23. And I think the other, the highest one was like 62. So, um, that's what the numbers were when I looked and I got it specifically from my bank. So again, health insurance is not tied to a company like it is in the United States. So, um, you can kind of get it a variety of different ways. I just happen to get mine from my bank. And I know it seems random if you're coming from the States, but yeah. So that was my, my health insurance that I pay currently uh, is eight euros a month. All right, let's see. Let me check. Uh, okay. University of teaching. Thank you so much for that information, Anna. So yeah, guys, check the comments when I don't know, cause I don't know a lot. Um, hopefully somebody in the comments will give you some um, answers that would be helpful. Okay. All right. Um, health insurance. We got that. Okay. Okay. I don't know if there's Caribbean. I think in England. Okay. So someone said majority of Caribbeans are actually in England. So I hope that helps somebody. Did you consider other countries? Okay. Did you consider other countries to settle in before deciding on Portugal? I'm sure traveling extensively helped. It did help dramatically. Um, well, when it was time for me to pick a country, I wanted to pick, well, I wanted to pick Europe um, more so because um, I wanted a certain level of amenities. Um, certain countries um, are not all the way 
connected. Like sometimes there's inter intermittent um, internet issues. Like many of you know, I'm obsessed with Costa Rica. I live, really love Costa Rica. But the city that had the most reliable internet was San Jose, and I didn't want to live in San Jose. So I did consider other countries, but because I'm not retired and I still uh, work, I have a digital marketing company, and plus I day trade, I needed to have something that had the same kind of amenity structure as the U.S. did. So um, Europe kind of flipped that bill in addition to, well, when I first did the research, it was saying that Portugal was one of the cheaper European countries to live in. I don't know if that's necessarily the case right now, but that's kind of what put Portugal on my map. When I checked it out, the weather, the food, the people, the wine. So I just, I just made that decision. Okay. Uh, okay. Here's some interesting information. Okay. Do you know any small historic towns, a quick train ride from Lisbon that would be nice to live in? Also, what are your favorite parts of town in Lisboa? Um, I would not know what's uh, good train rides to live in because I, I didn't have that much experience kind of looking at a bunch of different cities, but I feel like just check, check out some Airbnbs and just break it up. That's what I did. Like when I first came here, I probably stayed in 10 different Airbnbs in different neighborhoods to see which one had the vibe that I wanted. Um, What's your favorite part of town in Lisboa? I don't know. Um, my favorite part of town? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think the closest part to the water. <laughs> um, if you're talking about to live or just to kind of hang out and enjoy life, it's definitely um, on the coastline by the water. I sit out there for hours. Um, in regards to living, I don't, I think um, Estefania was one of my favorite neighborhoods. Okay, so let's see, let's see. Thank you for um, relocating them in soon. Oh, Katrina, congratulations. I love to find out all the best restaurants for us post lockdown on lockdown. Yeah, me too. The thing is, the restaurants is going to be hard. Like, it's been super, super hard, guys, with everything shutting down. I'm not sure how many companies are going to be able to survive or how many restaurants are going to be able to save, survive because it's going to be severely difficult, not just in Portugal, but all over the world. So with the shutdowns and people getting laid off, like people's discretionary income is just going to change dramatically and it's going to be rough. I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not really sure how that's going to work. Um, so Nancy says she lives in Kishkais. Yes. Um, we live in Cascais, the most expensive city in Portugal, and found our expenses in total are about 25 to 30 percent less than the United States. And you came from Southern California. Thank you for that information, Nancy. That's super helpful. So, guys, um, she's in Cascais. So if you have questions about that, uh, check out Nancy. All right. How are you looking for your mind and well-being? Let's see. What does that say? Um, how are you looking after your mind and well-being being you're in a foreign country and your family is back in the U.S. and going through a pandemic? That's a good question. <sighs> um, I guess as much as you can. I mean, I, I don't even know how to answer that. Um, I had to go back to the States uh, what, a month and a half ago, and that was super, super hard. It was super emotional this time than it was before, and that was a bit much. Um, I am an introvert, so I think the introverts of the world are probably able to cope a little bit better. Um, far as me being in a foreign country, that doesn't really bother me because before I moved, I was low key over America in the first place. So I don't miss living in America. So that part is helpful. Um, I miss my family and friends. That's the hardest part about moving abroad. Like I miss them a lot. Uh, but I think getting a support system in the home, in the country in which you're in is going to be super, super important in regards to keeping your mental health uh, together. But there's also some changes in like even my work balance. Like I still work like a maniac here. Um, <laughs> but it, it's prettier. I don't know. Uh, so it's a lot less stressful. Uh, and then my cost of living is substantially lower here. So I don't have to take on as many clients. I could be a little bit more flexible and creative. So I don't know. I hope that answered the question. So how do I deal? It's, it, it depends. It does help that I have some phenomenal um, people that I've met here that when I'm feeling 
you know, lonely or need to see uh, human beings, I'm able to do that. I still FaceTime with all my folks almost daily. Um, so that kind of helps. But uh, being in the, the foreign country part doesn't um, bother me. When I first moved here, it was a struggle just because it was just so much new stuff I didn't understand. Okay. Do you prefer living inland or the coast of Portugal? So now I can say I prefer a coast. Um, when I first moved here and not being like dead in the city, I was like, I, I can't walk to this. I can't do this. Like, And I was just, I was doing the most. But now waking up to water every single day, like I, I'm in a constant state of being grateful. And I love that. So I do prefer the coast now that I'm kind of like toying with the idea of purchasing a home. Now that I have a view, now I'm kind of looking for a house with a view. So I prefer the coast. I never, I never thought I would say that. I was, I'm a city girl. <laughs> never thought I would say that, but that's how I feel. Uh, try all restaurants, maybe surprise. Yes, hopefully the restaurants will still be able to survive during the pandemic. Okay, I think we are good on the questions. From uh, it's common to get health insurance from your bank. Okay, so. She said it's um, from my previous research. It is common to get health insurance from me. Okay, cool. That's where I got mine. Um, let's see. Uh, thank you for the information. It's very helpful, especially these unusual times we're living in, knowing there are options outside of the U.S. are helpful. Yes, there are totally um, options outside of the U.S. Let's see, Michael. There are certain parts in the Alfama neighborhood that have water views. True. I don't. And people don't come. I don't like Alfama. Uh, I feel like it's massively. It's a bunch of tourists. I mean, you may not know that now, just because it's not many tourists here. But Alfama just has a like. It's. I'm not. I'm not a fan of Alfama, but um, it could be somebody may love it. So don't listen to me. Uh, let's see. Okay, just joining now. Any news on when things are opening for travel? I have no idea, hon. You're gonna have to keep checking the government websites because oh no. And even if it is open for travel, certain countries might be banned still. They may be open to Europe, but might not be open to the US. So I don't know. We're still on lockdown, so I don't know what that is. Okay. Uh let's see. Love your content. Thank you for sharing your journey and planning on move and hoping to be there. Oh, congratulations, Rachel. Okay. In the coaches possibly taking jobs from Portuguese. Okay. So do you sense any ill feelings toward foreigners, U.S., especially moving to Portugal and possibly taking jobs away from Portuguese nationalists? I haven't experienced that. I don't work um, in Portugal. I work in the U.S. Um, most of the expat friends that I know, they do not work in Portugal. So um, I, haven't, I haven't had those experiences, um, but also I don't work in Portugal. Um, so... Sorry, I don't have any information for that. Remember you saying how much I love you were in Saldana. Yeah, I'm so surprised. You, I know. Girl, here I go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Please comment on how to visit now during lockdown since they have a digital nomad log term promotion in Portugal. I don't know anything about. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Digital nomad long term. In Portugal, promotion. A promotion? What does that mean? Um, yeah, I don't know what that means. Uh, please comment on how to visit. If you are, if you, we're in a lockdown, so you don't visit Portugal during this time. Um, the lockdown, from what I was told, maybe um, go up in the 11th or the 15th of this month. I'm not sure. But if you don't have a residency card, you can't visit in Portugal. That's not an option. Um, you just gonna have to be patient and wait, y'all. We in a pandemic, so governments are gonna do what's necessary, and we just gotta buy by it. Um, okay, like I said, I spent several years abroad and I'm used to living in the Netherlands. I want to visit the Netherlands. Oh my god, how's the Netherlands? I recommend NordVP and oh, is, did someone ask about a VPN? I use Express VPN. If anybody cares. Um, you made so much of myself. I am a loner. Let's see. Um, I made so much of myself. I'm a loner as well as an extent. And I live in Chicago. I don't have much of a just, I, yeah, I feel like introverts can kind of rock this probably a little bit easier, but I could be wrong. Um, Antonio, do you know how much longer for the lockdown 
Or is there any idea? I have no idea, honey. Only oh, you got to go to government websites to get that because I have no idea. <sighs> okay, when the pandemic is over, what activities do you want to do? I want to go travel all over Portugal and find the, the, the things I planned on doing last summer, like seeing um, Madeira and all the, the the Algarve and going to all these different places in Portugal. I really, really, really want to do that once activities open back up. Mm, okay, Dave gave some really useful information for border and travel information. Check the app Reopen EU. I have never used it, but hopefully that will help some of you all. Thank you, Dave. Okay, so they're saying March 11th. Thank you, Miguel. Um, okay, uh, yes, dear, about a thousand as you long since. What does that say? It says, yes, a deal, about a thousand USD. As long as you stay at least a month, I saw this promotion in a travel station online. I've never heard of that. What does that mean? That they will give you a thousand dollars to just stay there for more than a month? You gotta, you gotta include a link in the um, comments when this is over, because I need to read this. I have not heard that, but I'm out of the loop because um, I'm already here. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, this, this, these discussions are very helpful. I'm eligible to retire and I'm considering Portugal, so I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, hon. Go back around different countries. Let's see uh, if, I, if I go bounce around to different countries for a year or two, but I have sold my house. It is important for me to keep a U.S. address uh, like with family. It depends on you, honey. Um, uh, I mean... It like, do you have bills that go to your house? Like, it, it really depends on you. I, I, I think I sent my mail to my best friend's house, but I don't get nothing. All my bills and stuff for the U.S. come to me um, digitally. So, I mean, that's that's going to be your call. You may not even need it, honestly. But they do have companies that you can um, you can uh, go to. Wait, what? Madeira is one of the primary areas where the deal is going on. Shut up. Can you okay? When this is over, put a link in the in the comments, and I'm gonna pin it so that we can know what you're talking about. Cause I need to know what's happening. Um, U.S. number, especially when you try to go. On. Okay, so okay, no, not a question, but a suggestion that people who st still keep their U.S. number, especially when trying to log onto your U.S. bank accounts, they may send. Okay, that is a very good comment. So this is how I get over that. So I have a Google Voice number. Um, Google voice will still give you text messages, um, when you're out of the country. So to avoid the cost of having to have a U.S. number and a Portuguese, Portuguese number, Google voice will help you that. Now, fun fact, uh, even you can do a free Google voice account in order to do that. You want to set that up before you come to the country, set up a Google voice account in the U S and then if you set up all of your banks to that particular number, you can receive a text message, um, out of the country. So that is what I use for my U S bank and my Portuguese bank. So my Portuguese bank has my Google voice number in addition to my Portuguese telephone number. Um, so thank you for bringing up that point because that is true. Um, but to save in cost so you don't have to have, uh, just get a Google voice number. Um, and if you want to shut off your US phone, you can technically do that. I can't remember, but it'll save the cost. If you want to just bring it all down to almost zero and no gig, you can still have a Google voice number. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You said, no, you pay. No, you pay $1,000. You stay a month and in some cases include some amenities. You pay a thousand dollars, you stay a month, and in some cases, it includes some amenities. I don't feel like I understand. We're gonna have to chat afterwards because I don't, I don't get that. Why am I paying a thousand dollars for them? Um, thank you for sharing your business with uh, off topic, but do you? Um, everyone is asking, do I get my braids done in Portugal? This is the first time I've gotten my braids done in Portugal. Yes. Um, did I go into a salon? No. Um, they came to my house. It was. A shit show. I ain't even gonna lie to you. It was it was it was bizarre. So I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. I've I've never uh would I go back to the company? Probably not. Um that's what we have on that. Okay, give me okay. Can you give some more details on the web address? Yeah, so can yeah, can you yeah, because we don't know what's what's happening with that. So let us know. Um Okay, I think love you. I hope you're in Brazilian. 
That's what's up. Thank you. I need to know about right. See, now you got everybody excited about this Madeira situation. Can I let's see? Can I get a good job as an RA in Portugal? And do you know how much? Why would I? I don't know. I don't know what they get paid in the United States. I have no idea what they get paid in Portugal. I don't know how you become a RN in the US. I definitely don't know how you do it in Portugal. Um, you're gonna have to research that, hunt. I have no idea. Um, yes, get a digital mailbox and a Google phone number if going overseas. Yes. Um, Nikki Faye, you guys met her on the Moving Abroad Summit. She uses Google Fi and she swears by it. She says she's able to use it in every country. She's moved to like 10 countries in Africa. She's lived in Colombia. She's lived in parts of Europe and she swears by Google Fi. I have never used Google Fi, but you know, maybe something to check out. Um, Okay, so here we got some answers. Um, US 10, it depends on what you mean by good job. Very good question. Um, if you're fluent in Portuguese, the average month wage is 700 euros. So I hope that helps. Um, oh, wait, somebody's talking about Google Fi. I have Google Fi as my cell phone provider and I was able to get my text message and make calls when I lived in Cape Town. Okay, so, whoo, that was a lot. I expected to be on here this long. How long have I been on here? Damn, I've been on here an hour. Okay, so I think we're done with questions. <laughs> and I hope this was helpful. So just to recap, my utilities are about 100 to 112 euros per month during the winter. When it's warm, it's about 60 euros. My rent is 750 euros. My insurance is 8 euros. My, um, my phone is 14 euros. Um, my food ranges between 20 to 40 euros and transportation. It's eight euros for me to get from where I live to uh, downtown Lisbon. Um, I work from home, so rarely am I going downtown Lisbon. And now I like like it out here. I used to rush to the city every time I got the opportunity. And now I'm like, girl, I ain't think about the city. Who thought that was going to be me? Um, so that is the questions and answers. I think we covered everything. No more questions, right? Right. And where, uh, when you're talking about the, uh, don't forget to put the link, Isan1. Don't forget to put the link in the comments to let us know uh, about this. Uh, okay, so we got some other people talking about Google File when I was in Maui. It's great. That's what the people say. The people say Google File. I, I when I looked at it, I thought it looked crazy expensive, but. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, thanks for information. Stay safe. Thank you so much, Sandra. I appreciate you. Yes, okay. I'm down for the cake party. <laughs> All right, yo, it's been real. I'll chat with y'all later. Bye.